A C-Sharp Style Guide supports the work of your developers and the growth of your projects. The C-Sharp Style Guide ebook at the link below gives you and your team everything you need to develop a consistent code style for your studio. While there's more than one way to format Unity C-Sharp code, the overall goal is the same, a cleaner, more scalable code base that makes it easier to grow your team and your game. In this video, we'll give you an overview of the guidelines and we'll walk through lots of examples for developing and maintaining your own style guide. These tips and tricks will enhance the clarity and readability of your code, which in the long run will make you and your team's life much easier. We'll go over guidelines for naming and code formatting, and then we'll take a quick dive into advice for classes and methods. Before we dive in, know that these recommendations are based on general industry standards for C-sharp and are meant to be inspirational rather than hard rules set in stone. Anything here can be adapted to your needs and preferences. So with that out of the way, let's start with naming. The master of naming, Carl Linnaeus, once said, if you don't know the name of something, the knowledge of it also perishes. Names aren't just labels, they communicate meaning and intention. The better the names for your classes, variables, and methods, the easier it is for others to understand your work and build upon it. Here are some helpful guidelines to keep you and your team in the light. Variable names should be descriptive, clear, and unambiguous. Avoid using too many prefixes or special encoding, and make your names easily searchable. While variables should be nouns, prefix bools with a verb. Often they're an answer to a question, such as, is player safe? Anything can be true or false about monsters, but with our monsters awake, the meaning is clear. For consistency, your team style guide should specify whether to omit access level modifiers or to specify them. Local variables and method parameters should be camel case, and public fields, class, and method names should be pascal case. If instead of Visual Studio, you use JetBrains Rider, the default style suggests that public fields be camel case and private fields have an underscore prefix. It's worth noting here that it's also common to use M underscore for private member variables. Both conventions are useful for differentiating between private member variables and local variables. However, since we're initializing a couple of these variables with a value, Writer suggests tagging them with a serialized field attribute in order to make them appear in the inspector. And from there, Writer suggests removing the underscore prefix. Both of these styles are perfectly fine. The important thing is that your team form a consensus on the style to go with and that everyone follows it consistently. When naming classes, use Pascal case nouns. The class pet follow could imply an action or method. Changing this to pet follow controller or a pet follow behavior makes the name a noun, which more clearly indicates a class. Methods and functions are used interchangeably in Unity. However, method is the default accepted term because you can't write a function without it being in a class. Methods perform actions, so start the method names with a verb. In the case of a simple hunger system, increase hunger and eat food. Camel case is used for method parameters, like here with decrease hunger amount. Methods returning bool should ask questions, much like the Boolean variables themselves. Here we have is starving and is well fed. Events in C-sharp implement the observer pattern. The subject or publisher can notify a list of dependent objects called observers or subscribers. Think of the observers as waiting or ready for a signal and each has their own response when the signal occurs. Consider this example, a roguelike game where each room is a level. Clearing a room of enemies means the player can open a door to the next room, and when they do, they get shown a new ability which is granted when they're ready to proceed. Name events with a verb phrase. Use present or past participle to indicate events before or after. In the example here, opening door for an event when the player first opens the door, the room is cleared and we can show the player things like the new ability, and door opened for an event afterward, when the next room is truly open for the player to enter. Use the system.action delegate for events. In most cases, the action of tDelegate can handle the events needed for gameplay. You can pass anywhere from 0 to 16 input parameters of different types with a return type of void. When you raise an event, prefix the event raising method with on, like on opening door or on door opened. In this example, we're passing an int parameter for the number of the next level. That number could be used to display the next level number, or it can be used for the ability grantor to select the appropriate new ability for the next level. Prefix the event handling method in the observer with the subject's name and underscore. In this case, completed room events underscore show new ability and completed room events underscore grant ability. That makes it really clear where the event is coming from, what the methods are subscribed to. 
Namespaces ensure that your classes, interfaces, enums, and so on won't conflict with existing ones from other namespaces or the global namespace. This can also be useful for preventing conflicts with assets from the asset store. When applying namespaces, use Pascal case without symbols or underscores. Create subnamespaces as well. Use the dot operator to delimit the name levels, allowing you to organize your scripts into hierarchical categories. The less your team has to think about or fuss over formatting, the more time they can spend on other stuff. How should your team format their code? A few guidelines starting with properties. Properties provide a flexible way to read, write, or compute class values. They behave like public member variables, but they're actually special methods called accessors. Each property has a get and set method to access a private field, which is called a backing field. A property encapsulates data, hiding it from unwanted changes by the user or external objects. The getter and setter each have their own access modifier. The wisdom buff property of this potion of wisdom can be read-write as it currently is. It can be write-only with a private get or read-only with a private set. Syntax for properties can vary, so your style guide should define how to format them. For example, use expression body properties for single line read-only properties. In this case, the private underscore wisdom buff is the private backing field, and wisdom buff Pascal case is a read-only property that returns the backing field. If something drinks the potion of wisdom, they can get the wisdom buff without the possibility of accidentally setting it. Apply the expression bodied syntax for the set and get accessors to explicitly implement them. And then make the setter private if you don't want to give right access. Script serialization is the automatic process of transforming data structures or object states into a format that Unity can store and reconstruct later. Group data in serializable classes or structs to clean up the inspector. Define a public class or struct and mark it with a serializable attribute. Define public variables for each type you want to expose in the inspector. The serialized field attribute can work with private or protected variables to make them appear in the inspector. This encapsulates the data better than marking the variable public and prevents an external object from overriding its values. Use the range attribute to set minimum and maximum values. The range min max attribute is handy if you want to limit what the user can assign to a numeric field. It also conveniently represents the field as a slider in the inspector. The two most common indentation styles are the Allman style and the KNR style. In the guide, we use the Allman style from the Microsoft Framework Design Guidelines. Where possible, don't omit braces, even for single-line statements. Horizontal spacing is a simple way to improve your code's appearance. Add spaces to decrease code density. Use a single space before flow control conditions, and add a space before and after comparison operators. Compared to before, horizontal spacing makes things much nicer and easier to read. As Robert C. Martin writes in the book Clean Code, the first rule of classes is that they should be small. The second rule is they should be even smaller than that. Following the single responsibility principle means that each module, class, or function is responsible for one thing. Here we have a bounty hunter mission board class. It lists the bounties available and defines a struct for the criminal data, and it's responsible for playing audio, and the player uses a class to navigate the mission board and redeem bounty rewards. Anytime you're describing a class and find yourself saying and, your class is probably responsible for too much. The class takes a few simple things and has entangled them all together. If we want to add a new feature, like a timer for high priority targets, or another menu to show criminals that have been eliminated, we end up stuffing this class with more and more. Let's do a quick refactor and make this class responsible for only one thing. Starting with the most obvious, let's take the sound effects out first and put them in a dedicated mission board sound effects class. And then instead of a struct, let's make the bounty target data a scriptable object. That way we can create assets of our criminal data. Next, let's put redeem reward in its own dedicated class. Not only does that focus this class more, it lends itself to better design. We could easily anticipate that the player may want to redeem a bounty without opening up the mission board. With all that done, looking over the methods, viewing bounties, navigating through them, and choosing a target, let's rename this class to bounty hunter mission board controller. Limiting the size of the class this way has made it more focused and cohesive. Like classes, methods should be small with a single responsibility. Each method should describe one action or answer one question. A good name for a method reflects what it does. Here's some advice for your methods. Don't have a method like this one that works in two different modes based on a passed-in Boolean flag. Instead, make two methods with distinct names. 
In this case, separate the drop loop method into a drop rare loop method and a drop common loop method. These methods are as clear as possible about what they do. In this example, if we want to add another category of loot, like junk or quest item, we can just create other methods similar to what we have here. In the book The Pragmatic Programmer, Andy Hunt and Dave Thomas formulated the dry principle, or don't repeat yourself. Avoid duplicate or repetitious logic. Here we have two methods where an explosion particle system starts and an audio clip is played. Of course, the issue is that we're repeating ourselves. The code is wet, or we enjoy typing. Instead, let's refactor these two methods into one play effects with sound method, where we can pass in any particle system or any audio clip we want. If we want to change anything about how particles and sound effects play together, this is the one place to change it. Everything presented here is more a set of habits than a list of rules. To get started on your studio style guide, check the link below for our example style sheet. And of course, you can use the ebook as a concise reference that goes into far greater detail than what was covered here. In the book, you'll also find information on setting up script templates, changing code formatting preferences in Visual Studio, and using editor config files when you have multiple developers working in different IDEs. In closing, as Michael Feathers writes in Working Effectively with Legacy Code, clean code always looks like it was written by someone who cares. What's true in life is also true in programming. Caring is not a destination, it's a daily practice. So thanks for making this video a part of yours.